Okay. Blog Talk Radio. right here on Indie Sire with your girl, Nakia. Guess what? Guess what? Ah, man. That's right. I was supposed to come up with another word. I can't stay excited on Tuesdays anymore because yeah, I said it on Monday. But I didn't come up with another word, so guess what? I'm excited. I'm excited to be here with you guys this evening. And you know why? Because you got me for a second night this week. If you did not tune in last night, you missed a treat. You really did. We had um, hip-hop artist, rap artist, T. Lee, out of New Orleans, Louisiana. We dropped his brand-new release, uh, My, no, 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 Go Best Friend, Best Friend Anthem. There we go, Best Friend Anthem. Yeah, so make sure you go check that out. The visuals just dropped on that on the 24th of January. And so it's it's a fire track. Uh, we're going to have it in rotation around here. Make sure that you go listen to a playback show. You know it's on what? Where we at? iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Spreaker, TuneIn, Stitcher, yada, 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 yada. You know what? Just go type in Google Indie Fire and watch where we pop up at and just go listen to the show. All right? Make sure that you subscribe while you're over there or one of those many platforms also. Because remember, guys, we're trying to build up our following so that we can get on iHeartRadio. Mind you, now, the submission's already in, but they're looking at the numbers all across the board, all right? So make sure that you're subscribing, you're liking, you're following, and supporting the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right? No show this Thursday. Again, I'll be traveling to spend uh, my my. Yeah, she's mine. Yeah, my daughter's birthday with my daughter. Yeah, she's turning 19. So I will be traveling to uh, her college to be a baby girl on Thursday and celebrate um, this joyous occasion with her. So no show on Thursday, but back here Monday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with, hmm, R&B artist, hip-hop artist, choreographer. My gosh, I did not know this man did all of this. Producer, engineer, Jew Major, and I'm, I'm, look, I got his bio today. Actually, I probably had the bio, but I just read his bio today in its entirety. When I tell you the people that he's uh, produced or he's been on stage with, crazy names we dropping on Monday. So make sure that you tune in. He actually produced for Double O. You guys know Double O. That's our 2019 Indie Fire um, Best Collaboration Award winner. Yes, so he produced several tracks with him, um, and so I'm excited to have him here with us on Monday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you cannot make them all, please, please, please do not miss them all, all right? Very quickly, I have some new music for you. Let's see, let's see. We have, hmm, oh, if you watched the Grammys, you probably saw them perform this live, Rodeo, Lil Nas X, featuring Nas. Y'all still hating on the performance? Get over it. Go listen to the song. The song's a banger. All right? <laughs> Lil Yachty featuring Lil Keed and Beethoven Beats with 18. You ain't seen. I still haven't listened to that. Probably won't listen to that. Um, let me see. Let me see. Who else? Who else? Oh, Saweetie featuring um, Galzara with Sway With Me. And I told you, I probably won't listen to that either because she snatched my mans up. You know, and I'm still not over that 
So <laughs> you guys go listen to that and tell me what you think about it. Um, Diva, that's the kid, Leroy, featuring Lil Tecca. Now, I want to hear that simply because I'm tired of that one track that he has, Lil Tecca. I'm tired of hearing that, and so I need to hear some new music from him. Um, Kalo K, that's Tory Lanez featuring um, Phoebe O. Forum. Y'all know how I feel about Tory Lanez, right? So, hmm. Um, those that's it. That's it. But no, no, Kesha has um high road. That's it for singles. Yes, for albums, um, Lil Wayne's funeral. I still haven't listened to that because I've just been watching the reviews and the reviews. Like I, I've seen some people saying, you know, like one or two tracks is 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 banging, and then like the rest of the album is like toilet water <laughs> with the shit in it, you know. <laughs> So I'm just like, you know what, maybe I don't want to hear that. You know, maybe he's washed up. Maybe he needs to let it go. Um, Megan Trainer has Treat Myself, and Russ has Shake the Snow Globe. I love it. I've gone through it. I've dissected it. I love every bit of Shake the Snow Globe. I love Russ. So. But you want to jump on that, most definitely. You want some new music um, from the mainstream artists, all right? Let me see what else I got for you. Somebody did send me some new, hmm, let's see. It has to do with Nicki Minaj, and it has to do with Rosa Parks. You guys heard about this? No? Here I go. All right, so today would have been Rosa Parks' 107th birthday. All right, so happy, 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 happy birthday, Miss Rosa Parks. Well, Nicki's been on hiatus on social media. She jumps back on social media, and she also... Um, let's, you know, her, her fans know that she's been in the studio working on some music and she gives a little snippet of an unreleased track entitled what we think, you know, is called Yikes. And so, um, the lyrics have been dissected, but one specific lyric says, all you bitches, Rosa Parks, uh-oh, Y'all didn't give me all the lyrics. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right. So all you lyrics, bitches, Rosa Parks, uh uh-oh, get your ass up. All right. So, of course, we know what Rosa Parks is most famous for, right? Right? Sitting. She didn't get up. So, first of all, why are you throwing shots at Rosa Parks? Secondly, because that was clearly, that wasn't, when you name dropped, like, you weren't paying homage to her at all, first of all. So, secondly, she didn't get up, though. She sat down. So, your lyrics don't really make no sense. Like, I think you need to revisit all of that, you know? I spend a lot of time dissecting music all day long, listening to critiquing music. But that didn't make any sense at all. Or maybe I'm digging too deep. And maybe everybody else who's responded is also a little confused. And maybe we don't know. Maybe you meant it enough. Maybe. I don't know. Help me out. Somebody send me a quick message and let me know. Go listen to it. Go watch it. Because I didn't listen to it. I don't, I'm not a Nikki fan. I just was sent, you know, my news. And that's what I saw. And saw the lyric. And that's what I got from it. Like, but she didn't get up. So why these females, they didn't, they, they again, maybe I'm digging the wrong way. Help me to help myself understand. <laughs> all right. That's all I got for entertainment and news. I'm sure there's more. But I'll have to go explore <laughs> until I can give it to you. All right. But I'm here this evening to present to you my very, very special guest. I'm super excited because, you know, we've had a ton of entrepreneurs the last year. They've been from business strategists, they've been, you know, um, authors, you know, they've um, um, founders of different organizations, particularly those differences that I like. You know what I'm saying? I don't think we've ever had a makeup artist here. All right, and not only a makeup artist, but a founder of a cosmetics line. So I'm super excited to have our guest here this, this evening, makeup artist educator Terry McDonald. Like an artisan who skillfully fashions unique items using the best materials and the highest levels of pride, skill, and creativity, Terry McDonald embraces every gift as a makeup artist. Hailing from the Bronx, New York, Terry's interest began when she was 10 years old. As a child, her family and neighbors were graced with personalized designer manicures and pedicures. Terry started in the beauty industry working for Clinique as a beauty advisor. 
She was recognized early for her keen eye with applying makeup. Not only was she certified to be a makeup artist, but she also promoted, or she was also promoted to the position of being a temporary store manager. Being a manager just was not enough to satiate Terry's appetite for expressing her artistry. She took a leap of faith and started her own business, T. McDonald Cosmetics, LLC. Terry specializes in bridal, editorial, runway, film, and print. Her hunger drives her to regularly attend fashion shows and classes to stay current with trends, styles, and techniques. She also has created and led classes on different techniques, such as the smoky eye and foundation. I need to perfect my smoky eye. We're going to get some tips tonight, guys, okay? Terry's Terry's mastery allows her skillfully and calmly to work well under pressure with a professional demeanor at all times. Indie Fire listening audience, I present to you this evening my very, very special guest, makeup artist, educator, Terry McDonald. Hello. <laughs> Good evening. How are you? I am well. How are you, Envy? I am well. I am well. Awesome. So, I want to I want to jump right to, into this. I know that your bio says that your interest began when you were ten years old, and I know I, I think that is something that every little girl, especially looking at little girls now. Um, they mm-hmm. watch their mothers apply makeup. You know, they watch their mothers get their nails done. Um, was that something that you were fascinated by because of, you know, watching an older well, woman I was who fasc- might have influenced you? Or where did that come from? Well, it came. It actually came from my aunt. Um, she didn't really apply makeup, um, maybe just a little lipstick, and neither did my mother. But my aunt, she did hair very well at the time, and she also was into nails and manicures and pedicures, and she had this beautiful kit with all the nail polishes and designs and jewels and everything in it, and usually when she's not home, I would, like, pull the kit down and start designing nails and kind of just created (laughs) my own little thing when she wasn't wasn't home. And then she would also, you know, some of the – the women that were in the neighborhood, if they were going out, you know, she would do manicures and pedicures, and I would always just watch her and be in awe of how she can create these designs. And then while I was watching her, that's how I, you know, got a niche for it. And, of course, taking her things when she wasn't there um, (laughs) and practicing, (laughs) and that's when I became, I fell in love with it. And that was something that I did on my own, and I was inspired by it. So then um, I didn't really get into the hair as much. I did my own hair, um, but I did do nails and ped- and pedicures. And once my mother realized that I had a passion for it, she went out and bought me this purple and white dance for a book bag and got me a whole bunch of nail polishes and everything I needed, buffers, files, and everything. And I just was also doing it as well. And then... From there, I was doing that for a, a 10 years old on weekends, made a little extra cash. Um, so wow. I did start with the makeup at first. Yes, I was doing that. So I feel like I always had this little entrepreneur spirit ever since I was younger. Um, I would babysit some of the kids from, you know, around, around the way or in the building, pick them up from school. I was very responsible. So I always had that entrepreneur niche ever since I was younger. So when did the the makeup come into play? Well, the makeup came into play um, when my first job out of high school was at Victoria's Secret. So I don't know if you remember when Victoria's Secret used to have this great cosmetic line. That was actually my very first compact foundation was at Victoria's Secret. Um, So the Victoria's Secret that I worked um, at in Inglewood, New Jersey, We didn't have a full line of makeup, but we had, like, a few little eyeshadows and and so forth. So a lot of times the women will come in, like, we had, like, little Kim and so forth would come into the boutique to shop, and no one really knew how to apply the eyeshadow. So I was always Mm. the employee who would, you know, hang around the lip glosses and the eyeshadows and apply it to the customers, and then they would purchase. So from then, working there, that's when my – 
my appetite for makeup opened up. You know, it went from me just using my fingers and just swatch and go eyeshadow on my eyelids to actually using more than one color and creating a look for myself. So that's where it all started. That's when my womanhood started, and I learned how to be a woman was working at Victoria's Secret. So that's when it all began for me. And now fast forwarding to now, how has the industry changed since the days of Victoria's Secret when you first began? The the industry has changed a lot. So I be, to me personally, I feel that now, before it was so hard for anyone to become a makeup artist, you had to really have a skill set, the leadership, and the tenacity to learn. But now anyone can just go on YouTube, watch a couple of videos, and become a makeup artist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and become a makeup artist. Not that I'm bashing anyone because it's great to know how to apply your own makeup, but I just feel like it takes out the essence and the real structure of being a makeup artist, you know, knowing your color wheel, knowing the, you know, the shapes of the faces and the different eye shapes. I think it takes away from that and those artists who have been around and paved the way for these upcoming artists. So I think it's, it's definitely changed. And I don't, and I, I don't, when I say this, I'm not saying it to knock anybody either. But I think there's mm-hmm. a difference between an individual who does um, learn from YouTube. Mm-hmm. Like my daughter is excellent, you know, applying her makeup and maybe her friend's makeup, but don't call her a makeup artist, all right? I feel like those individuals who, like you said, who are are, are professionally trained, who have some type of certification, you know, those who've invested some time, the energy, the blood, sweat, and tears, those are the true makeup artists who, who like you said, who know the color wheel. Like, I learned the color wheel many years ago and, and facial structures, and I learned all of that. Now, what I can do now, mm-mm. I wouldn't dare attempt to do anyone's makeup <laughs> um, because te- techniques have changed over the years. You know what I'm saying? And I've learned them, and I can apply them to myself, but I'm not certified to do anybody's face. I'm not certified to touch anybody's face just because I watched mm-hmm. a tutorial that helped me to help myself, you know? So I, I think um, it does take away from um, the true, um, the craft itself and those individuals who are, are specialized in that field. You know, it, is, it, is, it means something to be called a makeup artist. And, and everybody, they're not under that umbrella just because you um, can, you know, employ the art of putting on makeup. You're not a makeup artist. You know, there's a huge difference, you know, a huge difference. Um, just wanted to throw that out there. What, um, how would you describe your signature look? I know your bio mentions that smoky eye, and I, I like to yes. talk people's social media. <laughs> so I've seen um, a lot of your looks, and I've seen the smoky eye. But is that your signature look, or do you have a, a specific signature look? That is all Terry McDonald. Well, my signature look is definitely a smoky eye. I love a smoky eye. Um, I love a dark smoky eye because I know some people, when you automatically think of a smoky eye, you think of black or brown or gray. However, Mm -hmm. a smoky eye does not necessarily have to be those shades. It's just the act of blowing the color out. So you can have a bright yellow, you can have a bright pink, you can have a purple. Mm -hmm. It's just the act of blowing the, the color out. But I personally love, love, love a dark, smoky eye. That's my signature, a dark green, a black, a brown. I absolutely love it. I just love the transition and just the boldness of the color. So that is absolutely my signature look and clean skin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can you, <laughs> clean can you, um, can you virtually walk us through that technique. Somebody somewhere is, is, so, is taking notes right now. Okay. So when you're doing a dark, smoky eye, an easy, I'm going to give you the easy way for anyone to be able to achieve this. So you definitely would like, would like to start with a base. 
So usually I would use a black liner that is smudgeable. You can use, like, for instance, NARS has a great black liner. It's called Gran Via or Via Veneto. Um, they are water resistant, so they will lock in place, so you have to work very fast with it. So you just apply that all over the lid, blend it out with a fluffy brush, get into the crease. You can use a transitioning color. Usually it can be like a brown, a soft brown, or a reddish brown, depending on your skin tone, as a transitioning color. Then you can go in with a shadow. It can be, the, it can be a black matte or a black shimmery shadow. You would just place on top and just buff it right out. Now, if you feel that you take the darkness, the black a little uh, too much up into your crease, what's going to give you that nice smoky effect is using translucent powder. So you can use either a white translucent powder where it's going to be clear, or you can use a translucent powder that's maybe a shade or two darker than a white translucent powder. And that's what's going to give you, just buff it out, and that's what's going to give you the smoky effect of blowing that color out. And as simple as that. Hmm. All right. If you didn't so get it, the, you didn't get listen it. Listen to the playback show. If you didn't get it, listen to the playback show. It'll be there for you. All right. And you yeah, talk this, about you to be nervous. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> I, and I tell people all like the time. Speaking, I don't know why. Yes, like when I always... tell people, oh, listen. I tell people all the time. They want. They want. Um. They want me to send. You know, prearranged questions prior to the show. And I tell them no, uh-huh. very strong no. And what do you mean no? Like what I said, <laughs> no. Like this is your interview. You're talking about you, your life, and what you're passionate about. <laughs> Nobody knows you, your life, and what you're passionate about better than you. Nobody's going to be able to verbally express that stronger and better than you. So I'm sitting here listening to you like, yes. Like I, and, and you're an educator on this topic. You know what I'm saying? So she got this. She got this. Yes. yes. I got this. Perfect. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's just it. always something about the, the public speaking. Like, I just get so nervous. But if I have to get it done, I get it done, you know. But get it, it just, done. It just That's gives right. me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It just gives me anxiety. <laughs> so what made you come up with your own cosmetic line? What made me come up with my own cosmetic line is being in – management for so long and managing all of these prestigious brands from Mac to Clinique to Sephora to Kiko. And I'm just like, you know, I've seen so many good artists and just good people, you know, that were, that lost their jobs working for this company or or were not treating fair, treated fairly, not just in cosmetic, just in general, you know? And I'm like, you know what? I feel that with all of the techniques that I've learned, every brand has their own way of managing and how they want to market their brand and, you know, their makeup techniques and so forth. And I'm like, I've been doing this for so long, so why not use those techniques that I've learned and apply them and start my own business? Because if you think about it, Mac started off with just two people and they were creating lipsticks out of their kitchen. Two people Mm -hmm. creating lipsticks out of their kitchen and then their brand blew up, and then they just sold their sold Max to Estee Lauder. So I'm thinking to myself, each of these brands that I've managed, they all started from somewhere, started from nowhere, nothing, and look at where they are today, making millions and billions of dollars and have different retailers in all over the country. So why not use everything that I've learned from working for each of these brands and start my own and create a legacy for my children and my family? So that's when I was like, you know what, I'm going to just, I'm going to use what I've learned and start something for myself. However, I don't have all the answers to everything because when it's your own and it's your baby, you, you know, you have to start south step and do things how you want to do it. And you may not have all the answers. So that's when, you know, you meet people and mentors that would help you and guide you to create your brand and make it as big as possible and for it to be successful. Awesome. You do have a caller. Um, they've been hanging on for a while. They may want to just sit back and listen to the show. Um, they may want to uh, ask you questions. They may just want to show some love. So I do most definitely want to get them on. Um, they're calling in. Okay. Nine one seven. So they're right there with you. <laughs> All right. 
You're live on Angie Fire oh. with Nakia and my guest, Nakia. Um, my guest, oh, Lord, Terry McDonald. Who's <laughs> on the line with me this evening? <laughs> uh, this is Sean. Just Sean in, calling in, listening to the show, showing some love. Let me mute you back out. Oh, my gosh. Terry, do you uh, know this is another? <laughs> That was that. No, that was me. Terry, do you know um, Sean Wilson? Sean Wilson. Do I? I'm not sure. Are we not Go ahead, Sean. Sean. Give your plug. Plug yourself. Plug yourself. This is our 2019 <laughs> Indie Fire <laughs> Radio Awards show and uh, Entrepreneur of the Year right here. Um, but Sean, go ahead and plug your organization very quickly. All uh, right. Startup entrepreneur as well, just like you, of Coco Vita Coquito. So I got my own drink brand that I'm starting and everything. So just like just listening to your story is the same reason why, you know, I got started. You're in the industry for so long, you know, and you want to do mm-hmm. things how you want to do it, and you know how people treat people and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So I definitely agree with everything, like, you've been saying and everything like that. So definitely keep on Absolutely. doing your thing. You got support like me and Nakia, you know what I'm saying? But you just got to talk about it with everybody, so everybody knows. Yes. About it, even if they don't yes. Do yes. Thank you so much, and I'm glad that my is an inspiration to you because we definitely got to, you know, support each other, especially as entrepreneurs. Definitely. Yeah, thank you so much for calling in, Sean. You can follow me on Instagram if you're not, at t.mcdonaldcosmetics, LLC, and maybe we can connect. I'll connect with you. All right. Thank you so much for calling. You're Thank welcome. you for calling, Sean. Stay on the line. <laughs> I will. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Queen and where's my crown? <laughs> we sweet, we cute, we clean, we cool. With a bar and it goes so hard, she rap but she act like a lady. If you pass that mic, then you might not like when she get it back. Just saying, too hot to touch, too high to reach. I guess I'm like a flame. They did not see me coming, just let me show you something. I'm sick, I spit, I'm ill, I'm L and well, it's disgusting. I'm on a brand new board and lately I've been feeling wavy. Long hair, don't care, my faith is great. I'm such an effing lady. I know you see me and you hate me, baby, it's all gravy. I serve a king of kings and represent the one who made me. I represent the prince of peace and king of peace who rose from death and beat the beast. I sip the juice and eat the yeast. We sweet, we cute, we clean, we cool, we queen, we rule, we be the truth. We sweet, we cute, we clean, we cool, we queen, we rule, we be the truth. Queen up, supreme up, wear the crown, shut it down. Queen up, supreme up, wear the crown, shut it down. Queen up, supreme up, wear the crown, shut it down. Queen up, supreme up, wear the crown, shut it down. She got that crown, race in the walk, spit that it's to me. Melanin brown, lace them in chalk with that Esteline. Win and handling business, making decisions, riding with royalty. Looking delicious, ooh, she ambitious, God keep all of me. Rich is her father, and she the daughter, living in water. Submarine. Evil don't bother, she know the author, came in a slaughter. Guillotine. Uh, top of her class, top of her game, yeah. elevated. Mezzanine. Shop with the bags, drop with the queens, and we taking everything. Ooh. Ball cap to my head wrap, yeah. we down to my shoe strap. Nails, nails purse to my lip gloss, uh. world love in the six. Off. All caps in these red bags. Oh, she brownie like two snacks. Eaten. Well, first, and we dip off. Oh. By haters, I'm that ball. We sweet, we cute, we clean, we cool, we queen, we rule, we be the truth. We sweet, we cute, we clean, we cool, we queen, we rule, we be the truth. Queen up, supreme up, wear the crown, shut it down. Queen up, supreme up, wear the crown, shut it down. Queen up, supreme up. Charge, I take with the bars. I got it, been God. I gotta go hard like them boys, making noise.
boys, trying to pull up with boys, up for the task, eh, top of the class, so I am my status, know who my dad is, before you ask this, in prison, how a crown sits, black girl with magic, woman of God, walk by the spirit, no blind, eh, serving for something's a job, and when they pour salt on your work hard, eh, reminding your work hard, so that hard work better pay y'all, just off your elegant gloves, and give them that charm that set you apart from that, living low on a bad one, Hey, hubby know I'm a bad one, life on clothes, then I own a stove, show the J. Cole with a great view, Woo! Now I'm a mom too, gotta know my role model Cause she's saying everything that I do So I show a queen whenever I move Ay. You're just tuning in, you're live right here on Indie Fire With your girl Nakia And my special guest, makeup artist and educator Terry McDonald, not Nakia I got it right this time That right there was Keisha Beard <laughs> Out of Seattle, Washington, with Queen and Teacher and Dice Gamble and B. Angelique, one of our many, she was nominated in several categories for our 2019 Indie Fire Radio Awards show. Um, so make sure that you're checking out Keisha Beard on all social media. All right? So we were talking about your cosmetic line before we went um, into the song. What does T. McDonald Cosmetics LLC stand for? Well, T. McDonald, or Cherry is my middle name, um, so I use Cherry instead of my first name because growing up, everyone butchered my name, so I figured Cherry would be easier. Um, McDonald, that has a deeper meaning that I choose to keep to myself. <laughs> but um, so, T. McDonald, that's, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't tell you that right now. <laughs> okay. Right. But, um, yes, yes. Uh, so that has a different meaning. Um, but I decided to go ahead and um, call my brand Terry McDonald LLC Cosmetics because um, I don't plan on just giving service. I plan on creating a bigger brand for myself and coming out with products um, for both men and women internationally. So, you know, I'm a big thinker and I like to think big. So I'm not, I chose not to go with like a Faces by Terry I decided to just name it a whole cosmetic brand because I have bigger goals and aspirations for my brand and for myself. What is your brand philosophy? Um, what is your brand philosophy or your mission? Oh, did we lose her? We might have lost her. It's all good. Terry, she'll be back. She'll be back. I know she has a little one. And he may be, you know, in there with his mother right now. So this is what we'll do. We're going to very quickly jump into, oh, I got it back. I got it back. <laughs> yep, I'm here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I oh, thought, my goodness. I thought maybe, you know, your three-year-old might have come in there and, you know, hijacked the phone or whatever. No, he's he's out there. He's chilling. <laughs> In here, it has a little <laughs> signal, kind of bad in my apartment, so that's why. <laughs> so we just decided Got to you. cut out. But Got I'm back. So what? So what is the what is the brand philosophy? So my brand philosophy is when you look good, you feel good. There's many a times that you know throughout my career in the cosmetic field that I would see women come into, um, say like into Mac, and they would see us. And they'll feel intimidated, they'll be shy, and just like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. And by the time I sit them in my chair and I'm talking with them and, you know, we start talking about things and what's going on in their personal life, and then by the time they look at their makeup and they're done, it's a whole different person that walks in that is, that's now leaving. So, you know, they have a little extra pep in their stuff, they're flipping their hair, and that's what it motivates me to continue to be a makeup artist and inspire me to be a makeup artist because the look that women have when they have their makeup done and that confidence is so strong, and it, it, I just love it. So that's my philosophy is when you look good, you feel good, and every woman should try their best to do, even if it's a little bit, do whatever it is that's going to make you feel good and look good because as women, we have so much that we have to do 
whether it's take care of your husband, the kids, there's a lot of pressure on us, and sometimes we tend to forget about ourselves. So something as little as putting on a little eyeshadow, a mascara, or lip gloss can change a whole, a woman's entire day and entire mood. So that's my philosophy on my brand. What element of your job do you enjoy the most? Huh? <laughs> What elements of your job do you enjoy the most? As you hear now with the signal again, I'm sorry. <laughs> what okay. elements yeah, of not. your job <laughs> what elements of your job do you enjoy the most? The elements of my job that I enjoy the most is being able to heal my clients through my artistry. So makeup, when I got into makeup, it was more for me than just playing in color and doing makeup. But there's a lot of women that have sat in my chair that I've actually was able to counsel and, you know, was able to talk about their issues and get advice as I was doing their makeup. And I gained their friendship and their trust, and they continue to book me to do their makeup because they feel comfortable with talking with me and and getting honest and genuine advice with issues that were going on in their lives. So for me, makeup is more than just playing in color. I was healing, you know, through my artistry. So that's a, that's a key element that plays a big part in my career as a makeup artist. So, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, small business, businesses in general, organizations, they have business plans, right? They have a mission. They yes. have a vision. We have personal, we should have personal vision as well. Do you have a personal vision for yourself? A personal vision for myself? Yes. Mm, my personal vision is to create generational wealth for my family and to create a legacy for my family. That's my personal vision, you know, because I feel as, African Americans sometimes we don't we we don't have something from our parents or our parents' parents that we can say that this was built and, and passed on to generations. So that's my personal vision for myself is to be able to create something for my family and for my children and just to leave a mark to say that I was here. So that's my personal vision. I don't know if you have that written down and you can look at it visually every day, but I want you to amend that because when I ask you um, what element um, did you enjoy the most, you the first thing you said was to be able to heal mm-hmm. others through what you do. Yes. I want you to amend that and attach that either to your business, vision, mission, or your personal vision. Because that right there spoke volumes. You know, people in the service industry, a lot of them mm-hmm. are, are there to get the money. You know, um, they overbook. You mm-hmm. as a client are waiting one or two hours to get your nails done because you got the hottest chick, you know, in the city doing your nails. Yeah, I'm one of those people who we'll wait two hours. Um, and, you know, <laughs> the same the, the same with your hairstylist, you know, you're waiting one hour because they're overbooking because they're all about the money. Um, but you may not have had the time to build that friendship with that individual that you just spoke about. You have mm-hmm. the time to sit down and get your hair done, to get your nails done, to get that pedicure, you know what I'm saying? The conversation is lacking something. But for someone to be able to sit down and pour out to you and you be able to pour into them, big volumes about you. So healing, mm-hmm. I think you need to add that. And I think within um, being able to do that, uh, the clouds will begin, and I shared this with someone today, the clouds will, will open in a different way. When you are helping God's people or when you are helping your creator's people, the clouds will open in a different way for you. 
Your blessings Absolutely. will pour down in a different way for you that generations after you will be able to benefit from. So keep that in mind. I'm going to get off my pedestal yes. before I start preaching <laughs> up here. Yes. Thank you, Izzy. Thank you. Preach, sister. Yes. Preach. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so so but yes. what is what is beauty? When you think of the word beauty, what is beauty for you? Beauty, beauty to me is not just what you see on the outside. It has a lot more to do with what's on the inside. So beauty to me is more internal than external because you can mm. see a beautiful woman. She got a beautiful mm. shade. Everything is perfect, but she can be a nasty person on the inside. Then to me, you're no mm. longer beautiful. It's just what's on the outside. Yeah. So beauty to me is from within. It, it has to do with your heart, with how you you process things, you know, how rational you are. It's all internal to me. If you don't have that inside, you're beautiful on the inside, you're not, whatever you have going on on the outside don't even matter. Love it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> three, three beauty do's and don'ts. You mentioned skincare <laughs> earlier. And um, mm-hmm. I'm at this phase in my life where um I don't care no more. Like, you know, when I was younger, um, I I modeled, and so I had to mm-hmm. look a certain way. I had to, you know, mm-hmm. play the part on a daily basis. You wouldn't dare catch mm-hmm. me uh, getting up in the morning without running straight to the bathroom and, you know, full face and then out the door or full face and sit in the house all day or, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm at the age where I don't care no more. You're going to accept me for who I am, you know what I mean? And so, uh-huh. um, but I've always had perfect skin. And so before you can start to pile on all of that makeup, you have to be able to take care of that skin first. So what are Absolutely. your beauty do's and don'ts when it comes to skincare and makeup? So some beauty do's and don'ts for skincare. First of all, people need to understand that Makeup is only as good as the skin underneath. So if you're not taking care of your skin, please don't expect me or any other artist to work a miracle, okay? Now, we can do the best that we can, but we're not going to work a miracle. If you're not exfoliating, you're not, you know, moisturizing your skin and it's flaking, baby girl, it's going to flake and it is what it is. I'll try for it not to flake, but it's going to flake. So (laughs) taking care of your skin is very, very, very important. The more that you take care of your skin, the less you'll notice that there's a less amount of product that you would have to use on your face. So that's number one. Um, Number two, a do is exfoliation. You should, should, should exfoliate. And using a physical exfoliant and using a mild exfoliant. Now, the difference between the two is a physical exfoliant is, of course, the ones with the granules in it. Sometimes it could be crushed pearls. It can be crushed walnuts that are in the physical scrub that you can actually feel. Um, The milder exfoliant is is a toner that you would use with a cotton swab and just swab over the face. That's a mild exfoliant. So toners are definitely a do. A don't when it comes to um, exfoliation, if you have blemishes, Please do not, do not, I repeat, do not use a physical exfoliant. That's the one with the walnuts and everything. Do not use that on your face. I know sometimes we see blemishes and they're like, if I use this scrub, I'm going to scrub it away and it's going to be gone. No, you're actually doing more harm than you're doing good because acne is caused by bacteria. If you're using a physical scrub on that acne, then what you're doing is that you're, you're, you're piercing the acne, and then you're smearing all of that bacteria all over your face. So before you know it, you're going to have another pimple on the forehead, another mm-hmm. one on your chin, and you're going to be like, wait, what's going on? Why am I breaking out? Right. And that's because you're spreading the bacteria all over. So please avoid using a physical exfoliant when you have an active breakout. Use a mild one instead. So that's, a, that's another that's a do and a don't. Another do and don't when it comes to makeup is try your best not to fall asleep with your makeup on. I know sometimes that's hard and sometimes we do it. Yes, it happens. But even if you come from the club or whatever and you're extremely tired or hungover and can't wash your face, get some makeup wipes 
wipe that baby off and go to sleep, and then you do your skincare regimen in the morning when you wake up. But try your best not to fall asleep with the makeup on because it clogs your pores, and you're going to start getting breakouts and so forth. So that's definitely a don't. Um, another do is using, using eye cream. Using eye cream is very important because underneath the eye can tend to be really dry, and as much as underneath your eyes it is moisturized, you'll notice that your concealer will go on much smoother, and it will prevent creasing or prevent any cakey, the product from getting cakey underneath the eyes. So using eye cream is very important. I know a lot of us don't use it because we're like, listen, that's too many steps. But, you know, when you get like up in your late 20s, early 30s, you know, your skin is changing, so you may want to invest in the eye cream. And my last um, do's and don'ts is when you're applying your concealer, ladies and gentlemen, use your weakest finger. So your weakest finger is that finger next to your pinky. Right. Right. Because the skin, the skin underneath your eye is very, very thin. So you don't want to go in and, like, tugging and pulling and, you know, applying that concealer or eye cream vigorously because the skin underneath is really thin, and then when you're doing that, you're breaking capillaries, your blood vessels underneath your eyes, and then before you know it, you're going to be like, well, why do I have darkness underneath my eyes? Darkness. And that's because your, yeah. break, your blood is pooling underneath the eye and it's going to create darkness. So you definitely always want to be careful with the skin underneath your eye when applying any product under the eye. So that is my, my do's and don'ts. Oh, she's so, she's so, God, she's so educated. She knows everything. All right, so Thank I, you. I, I, love, I love to question. share my knowledge. You know, God gave me this and he says, you know, when I give you a gift, you must share you must others. share it. That's so right. I Don't was, sit on it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. He's not going so to continue share. to increase in you if you sit on what he's given you. So you have to exactly. be able to give it, give it, so you can continue to receive the more, you know, that he's going to pour into you. So I'm always telling people that. That's in every aspect of your life right there. But I have a personal Absolutely. question. Talking about mm-hmm. the eye area. Like, so that that's, like, that's my worst area. And I am severely anemic severely anemic. Um, and so mm-hmm. I have really bad, um, the areas under my eyes are the, you know, the darkest part of my face and the worst. Um, my complexion is just is garbage, you know, because it's dark eyes. What's the best product? Because I've tried so many different products. Um, I'm always in Ulta trying products. I'm in MAC trying products. And I haven't found anything that, because I don't, like I said, I don't want to wear makeup every day now. I don't want to. I want to just go out fresh mm-hmm. face. And be done with it. But I find myself having to put, you know, something under the eyes to conceal the darkness. Uh, but I don't, I don't even want to have to do that anymore. So what would you recommend? What I would recommend for you um, to use using a concealer that's really creamy and lightweight, medium, maybe like medium, sheer to medium coverage, and maybe it's also a concealer that's buildable. So one of the concealers, which is one of the number one concealers in the U.S is a Radiant Creamy Concealer by NARS. That concealer is an amazing concealer. It's going to give you that sheer to medium coverage. is buildable, and you can mix it in if you want more of a lighter coverage with either your eye cream to thin it out if you want more of a lighter coverage, or you can thin it out with a primer. So I, for you, I would definitely suggest for you to try NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And it would look like you All have right. nothing on, like like it just looks fresh faced, like you don't even have any darkness under there. Like, you know, I woke up like this. <laughs> I'm on it tomorrow. Going to get wait yes. I have time to go get it tonight. <laughs> Definitely try All that. All right. Mm-hmm. Um does everyone look better with makeup? You know makeup is supposed to enhance. Yeah, right. Like, I've seen makeup completely transform people. All right. And every I don't think everyone needs to go out looking like they're in drag. Um and uh and, and I see that a lot. I don't know if it's intended um or inflicted mm-hmm. upon the victim. But um <laughs> you know, just, do you feel do you feel like do you feel like everyone looks better with makeup? Me 
again, I feel that makeup is supposed to enhance your beauty. You're not supposed to look like a complete different person, you know. When you take your makeup off, they'll be like, wait, 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 that's not the person that, you know, I saw in the club. However, <laughs> however, it has <laughs> become trend. It has become trend, those looks that you see on Instagram where you're creating, like, a whole new eye shape for yourself. You know, if you was a chinky, now you got, like, a whole almond-shaped eye. That is the right. trend. Um, now, makeup is an art. So to each his own, if you feel that that's how you like to wear your makeup, baby girl, do you. You know, you want the long lashes touching your eyebrows, baby girl, Ooh. do you. That's what makes you happy. Ooh. But um, I do not feel that makeup is supposed to completely transform you. Do I believe that on certain occasions for certain things that makeup could be applied a little bit heavier? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, if, you yeah. know, if it's your wedding day, you know, you may right. want a little bit more than what you're used to. So you may look a little bit different from, you know, from when they see you all the time. So I think depending on the um, the event or the occasion, your makeup can be a little heavier. Now, as you, as I know that you're referring to what you see on Instagram and the trend that's going on now, um, that, <laughs> again, I don't want to dash anyone, that's to their liking and if they want to do that. But um, I do not believe that you should look completely different. You should look a little. You should look polished and enhance features that they people would not normally notice when you're not wearing makeup. You know, so if you have you know really nice almond shaped eyes, and then you apply a beautiful wing liner, they'd be like, oh wow, I never knew your eyes were so big. Yes, right. because I have a wing liner on that's enhancing yeah. my eyes exactly. Yes, right. So that's what I think. <laughs> So if you arrive at a photo shoot or a show Mm -hmm. or an event and the model has less than favorable skin, what do you do? That has happened, and it's so funny you say that um, because uh, I just mentioned that to um, the co-owners for a fashion show that I'm the lead makeup artist for, was to tell the models to get their skin in order before the show. Um, but I have ran into models that actually were not knowledgeable about skincare. Some of them actually just wash their face with water and don't put anything on their face. Um, so during, yeah, listen, girl, you'd be surprised. In this industry, there's people that don't no. even never use soap no. on their face, like just with it, water, oh. and that's it. Oh. And, yeah, at first I used to be like, wait, really? Like, But then I'm oh. like, you know what? Terry, not everybody's knowledgeable. And some people really just don't know, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's my job, to educate them, to let them know, hey, sis, you know, you need to use a little, you know, a little soap, you know. You can buy a little pair of soap for, you know, sixty nine and use that as a butter. Um, so some people really don't know. So when I see these models, um, you know, I would, the conversation would then be about skincare. Like, you know, what do you use on your skin? And, you know, mm-hmm. once I finish their makeup, I'll drop a couple gems on them and suggest some skincare for them to use and let them know that, you know, your skin plays a big part in your modeling career. So you definitely want to take care of your skin, not just with your skincare, but also what you put in your body and take and watch what you eat and make sure you're drinking enough water. So sometimes people have issues with their skin. It's not necessarily all the time external because they can be using everything under the sun and it's just not working for them. Sometimes it's internal. You just have to just what you you know, put give in. yourself a cleanse. Right. Exactly. Give yourself a cleanse, and then you'll start to see how your skin will start to improve over time. So usually in a situation like that, that's what I would normally do. So when they leave, they'd be like, okay, Terry, I'm going to go try these products out, and then hopefully if I see them again in another show, or they'll DM me and tell me, you know, give me some um, feedback on the products that they've been using and show me their improvement on their skin. So that's usually awesome. how that conversation will go. Awesome. So what do you think about, you know, I remember when I first started wearing makeup and I was very limited on, you know, the products that I could wear um, that would match my skin tone because they, 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 you know, just weren't out there. They weren't catered to. All right. And so throughout the course of the years, you know, more lines were introduced and you had Queen Latifah, you know, who, 
who was the cover girl. She had her own line and Black Opal or Black Essence or whoever they were. They came out and, you know what I'm saying, people started to introduce lines for women of color. And now we have Rihanna. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about, you know, um, I I, I guess merging um, this. And when I think about it, I think about Barbie for some reason. Um, Because for so many years, you know, I'm a Barbie collector. And for so many years, you only saw like a black Barbie around um, the holidays, you know, Um, special times Mm -hmm. of the year, you would see a black Barbie or anniversary time, you know, but um, now you see black Barbie everywhere. Um, How Mm -hmm. do you feel about this, this now that we have um, skincare lines and we have um, independent skincare lines and we have um, independent cosmetic lines and we have, you know, um, this huge, you know, Fenty um, by Rihanna. Um, how do you feel about um, that? Or do you still stick to MAC and, and maybe L'Oreal and Clinique and even CoverGirl and Revlon and, you know, what do you cater to? Or who well, do you cater me to? As an, yeah, me, me as an artist, I am not, and one of the key things as a makeup artist is never to be biased. So Fenty and you know, Rihanna and Black Opal, I absolutely love it, and especially with what Rihanna is doing, she's setting the bar for upcoming entrepreneurs like like myself and others to see that she created a line and everything in her line wasn't perfect and it was all trial and error. And I'm sure she mm-hmm. probably knew too that you know some of her products weren't perfect, but she still put it out there because every artist and every woman or man that loves makeup, everyone's looking for something different. So she right. still put it out there and then, you know, use reviews and critiques, I'm sure, to come out with something even more and more, you know, better and powerful. But then not only that, what I noticed with Rihanna, but what I also noticed with her line is that she had a focus. And if you think about her line, her focus was complexion. She had eyeliner, mm-hmm. she had lipstick, but her main focus was complexion. She had yes. she had foundation for someone who was an albino. Like let's mm-hmm. be clear, like how often do you find foundation for a woman or a man who's albino? So that was where she where her big win was was that even though she came out with other sub products like her eyeliners and her lipstick, she had her main focus, which was her complexion, especially catering for complexion of women of color because we come in different ranges, not just that terracotta. You know, you do have some sisters <laughs> out there with a little yellow undertone like myself. Right, so right. She, you know, created that range. So I definitely, I'm, I'm really proud of her, and she's really inspirational to me because she set the bar to know that, listen, this can be done. And even if your products are not that perfect, just pick one main focus for your brand, and you'll see how it will blow up. And as far as me working for other brands, I worked for Mac. There were some products they came out with that we didn't like. And we just like, listen, this is garbage. But just because I worked there, I didn't push it on people. Like, listen, this is amazing product just because I worked for Mac. No, I was, you know, upfront about it. I'm like, listen, you know, you can probably find a better powder at Estee Lauder, you know, or at Clinique because this one is not really hitting right now. So Mm -hmm. just because I worked for a specific brand, there was some products that I didn't like, you know, and I'm never biased. I always, you know, go to different brands and try different brands and just, you know, see what works best for my clients' needs. Have you used, and I know, and you said um, for makeup artists not to be biased, and that's something that I've seen a lot of. Um, because they can use an eyeshadow palette from um, this line and they can use a foundation from this line. And of course their brushes come from this line and their eyeliner may come from this line. And I love it. And it's what's, what's work, you know, works best for that makeup artist as well as for their clients, you know? Um, but the crayon case, do you use their mm-hmm. product? I've used her lip glosses. I've tried her lip glosses and I've tried her eyeshadows. And I love I lip glosses, that's, that's I think the only two that I've tried. Yeah, that's the only two that I've tried so far was the lip glosses and um the eyeshadows. Yes. 
I just love the pigmentation of her eyeshadows. Um, everything is so bold. I I I love them. Um, when yes. I do put on makeup, you know, <laughs> when I do put on makeup, <laughs> my palettes look brand new, and I've had them like two and a half years, and they look brand new because I touch and go, keep it moving. Um, if 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 you could offer a piece of advice to or tips. To an aspiring makeup artist, and I'm I'm talking about I'm not talking about you know I I need a couple of techniques I um you know want to know how to perfect the wing you know um my contouring is a little off you know what I'm saying I mean a true person who is passionate about this as you are if you could offer some tips or a piece of advice to that individual who may be listening now or who may come back and listen to a playback show what would you say to that aspiring makeup artist? What I'll say to an aspiring makeup artist is to never limit yourself. Always, always, always have the willingness to learn, not only for yourself, but to also learn from other artists. There's many a times that um, I run into makeup artists who, you know, seasoned makeup artists or even, you know, makeup artists that are up and coming, and they come in with such, with such, cockiness, like, mm, especially when you're around other makeup artists, you can tend to sometimes get a little cocky or be intimidated. Never be intimidated and never come in being cocky. Always have the willingness to learn. The more you learn, the more you will grow as an artist. There is no cap to the amount of knowledge that you can gain as an artist. No matter how seasoned you are, you can be in this industry for 30 years. There's no cap to what you can learn. So always be willing to learn. Always be confident in your artistry. Never feel intimidated if you're in a room full of artists because every makeup artist has different techniques and of achieving a specific look. So whether it's brows, whether how to achieve a wing liner, every artist has a different way of achieving. So never, ever, ever be intimidated. Another thing... Um, that I would tell inspiring artists is that when you struggle and you're hustling to do what you have to do to make it as an artist, and when you finally reach that place where you feel that you're comfortable and you can drop a few gems on an upcoming artist, please do not feel that you're not, that, you know what, I'm not going to help her because I had to struggle and come out the trenches on my own, so she's going to struggle. Don't do that because God gave you a gift. And he made you go through that for a reason. So if you can help someone to eliminate going through some of the heartaches and being broke and some of the rejections, if you can just pass that knowledge on to help them, you should do so. Because at the end of the day, you're handing them the information, but it's not, it's not so much of you handing them the information. At the end of the day, it's what that artist decides to do with the information. But you've done your part of giving them the knowledge that they need to help them to grow successfully as an artist. And the last thing that I'm going to say is, ladies, get yourself a mentor. Get yourself a mentor, whether it's a spiritual mentor, Ooh, whether, it's, yes. whether, it's, whether it's someone who's in the makeup industry for a while, get yourself a mentor because this industry can break you. If you're not strong, it can break you. If you're not spiritually inclined or have that spiritual mentorship, it can break you down. You would have self-doubt. You wouldn't believe in your artistry. You would believe that you're not good. You would be doing a fashion show and stand next to another artist who was killing the hell out of a wing line and you over there struggling and you feel like, listen, this ain't for me. No. Get yourself a mentor that can help you with your questions, can help you to get through that emotional imbalance that you're going to go through, especially as an entrepreneur. You're going to lose friends. You're going to lose family members. You're going to lose people that were with you from since you started and no longer want to be your friend anymore because you no longer have time to engage in the things you used to because you have a higher purpose and a, and a goal. So a mentor is very, very, very important to keep you sane. So that's my gems that I have to drop. Oh, she is up here speaking knowledge. And much wisdom. And I tell you guys all the time when I have guests on the show and they drop these gems, don't just sit on them, all right? This is free information, for one. 
a lot of this they've gone through themselves, tested, you know, trial and error, proved to work for them. So they're passing it on to you in hopes that you're able to, you know, get to the level that they are and elevate yourself even higher. All right, so don't just mm-hmm. sit on this information. Grasp onto it and make it apl- applicable to all points of your life, all right? Don't just do that for me. Absolutely. Do that for yourself as well, all right? Terry, thank Absolutely. you so much for joining me this evening. You could have been anywhere, but you've taken the time to give so freely of yourself. Um, mm-hmm. Not only myself, but my listening audience to speak about, you know, your passion for this industry. And I have enjoyed you thoroughly. I want to go ahead and open the floor up to you so that you can get all of your contact information out for those who may be listening live, for those who may come back and listen to one of the many, many, many playback shows. The floor is now yours to get all of your contact information out. Okay, so guys, thank you again for tuning in. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is t.mcdonaldcosmetics, LLC. Um, you can book me for any event. Either you can DM me or you can email me at t.mcdonaldcosmetics at, gmail, t. at um, where you'll be able to, you know, inquire about any services or um, or about any anything, anything you want to ask me. You can just send me an email or you can DM me. Um, also, to the services that I provide, um, I provide makeup services. I also do um, parties, like mini, you know, tutorials. You can grab maybe four or five girls together. You can have, like, a girl night out where I'll teach um, a few basic pointers um, for everyday makeup. Um, and another great service that I offer is sometimes you go into Sephora, or any other, you know, makeup brand, and every time you go in, you have someone offering you something different. I actually would come out with you to these retailers, and I would, you know, create your makeup bag unique. Wow. Yes. I would, just, I would go through. We can go to Sephora. I like to take my clients to Sephora because you can get everything in beauty, <laughs> hair, you know, skin, like a personal shop, a hair, skin, makeup, yes. and I can just set you up for the new year, new you, you know. That's one of the, the services that I also offer, and it's a good time with me. You know, I come out with you. We have a great time in the store. I'm your personal shopper. You tell me everything you're looking for, what you want to look like, what you want to feel like, and I customize that for you. So that's definitely a special um, um, a special thing that I offer for my brand. So. You can hit me up at t.mcdonaldcosmetics at gmail.com to book that, or you can hit me up on my Instagram at t.mcdonaldcosmetics, LLC. I'm most definitely going to reach out to you. I can't drop dates because if I drop dates, then people will know things that the people shouldn't know. I'm not ready to, right? you know, get that you information just, me, just yet, well, but I don't know. Need to. I'll need to um, talk to you tonight about, um, you know, I need to book a makeup artist um, for some dates that are coming up when I'll be back home um, in New York. And so I need to, and I was sitting here thinking, like, you know, I could call several people, but, you know, I think we're going to keep that in the family. Once you're on the show, you're part of the family. You're welcome back at any time. So, um, again, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here this evening. Uh, Guys, again, uh, let me see. No show on Thursday. Back here on Monday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with hip-hop artist, R&B artist, choreographer, engineer, producer, he does it all, Ju Major out of Atlanta. And then on um, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we'll have Ashanti Middleton here. Ashanti's out of New York, and she is uh, the owner founder of Estevere Wine. You know it's going to be a time up in here because, you know, that's like next to water. That's my favorite drink, right? So we're going to have an amazing time here next Tuesday with her. And then Thursday, we have um, Fitch is here with us, an amazing R&B singer out of uh, somewhere in North Carolina. We found him, like, recently we found him. He found us. I can't remember. I think he found us. But um, I think he's somewhere out of North Carolina, so he'll be with us here next Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you cannot make them all, again, please, please, please do not miss them all. Terry, again, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Mm -hmm. Guys, have a good night. Thank you. Good night.